Okay, so let me get this in the frame. So here uh, I've got the other set of components and I'll kind of just do a review of these and actually just set them up here. And uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, I'm gonna set this up and then kind of go over after I've installed it into the case. I, I don't find them particularly useful and pretty much everyone else does it. So I'm gonna actually link to some videos where there's a couple of channels that actually do a really thorough step through and I just don't have the desk space and area to to do or shoot that kind of uh, video, but uh, I'll do the best I can. So uh, I've gone with the AMD A-Series. I know the new Zen chips are coming out, but they're not quite available, especially at the time that I'm doing this. I settled with A8 because there was a rebate. Same reason why I settled with the AS Rock, but I've had some of their boards in the past and I've really actually liked them. So, uh, so before that, let's go through the, we'll go through the motherboard and then I'll install the CPU and then we'll call it a day for this video. But let's just see what we get with this AS Rock or AS Rock. I'm not 100% sure how it's pronounced. I've heard both ways. So uh, let's see. We have video. Well, okay. We have quick install manual, drivers, uh, important if you're not, if you're using Windows. Uh, this is going to be a Linux block. So uh, I still keep those. I just don't chuck them. But uh, don't lose this because this is your connector case, uh, your connector plate on the back of your case. And if you lose this, then it just looks weird and dust will get in here. But this is definitely a keeper. Hang on to the install manual. They kind of go over the different options. One thing you do also want to look for, especially when you're just installing, or if you're not used to this, is the, you do definitely need, and there it is. So this is, it's going to be hard to see but the system panel header, like that's the one I always essentially just mark this page to. Everything else is fairly self-explanatory, but the, uh, cause you can, everything else is somewhat keyed, but uh, with the accession of the system panel headers, those are just usually either paired, like attached paired or individually paired wires. So they're not connected together or you can flip the positive and negative and rearrange them. And, and those can be, a, those are usually tedious, but the rest of the stuff's pretty easy. So I'll just set this aside. SATA cables. Uh, typically this is what I've noticed on most of the new ones. So you have a straight end and then a 90 degree. So I've got plenty of these, but I always keep them and never get rid of them. This is probably the most important if you are going to install a mini, I, know, I forget the technical name of this just blew past it the module m2 ssd or one of the wi-fi cards because you'll need this screw to hold it down so keep that safe because you don't want that actually flopping around in the case so let's remove this and i'll actually use i shouldn't probably hold it like that but i was holding it by the bag not by the case because definitely don't want to snap components off of that that will ruin your day so let me move this here I'll bring the CPU in here because that's about to go in there and I don't have an SSD mat I've been building computer cases computers computer components dealing with electrical stuff for quite a while and I've literally yet have to any to blow and hang up so knock on wood because I don't want to jinx myself but I've the only time I've actually in person seen somebody blow one of the blow anything electronic up was someone actually forced a CPU into these connectors. So these connectors, for those that don't know, are called zero insertion force. They may or may not be called that, but that's how they started out because you use zero insertion. You're not supposed to force it in with your thumb or your finger. You this little rocker arm here, you lift it up, set it in and then gently drop it down. So zero insertion, don't force things in. So let me go ahead and open this. And I don't think, let me, my trusty knife should be around here. Oh, oh it's not there. Okay. So I will carefully open this. You know what? I will 
I've pretty much got it done, so I'll just keep talking. So I'm kind of opening this up off camera because I don't want to throw anything or let anything fall into the case. The, the important thing I'm trying to keep stuff from falling into is here where the CPU processor will sit. So that is probably, so the two most, the two most thing, the two most components you must, you should be, or take additional care with are the processor and the memory. You definitely don't want to bend or force the processor in. The memory will take a little bit of effort, but you want to do that carefully. And I'll actually, uh, I'll, I'll add to this video once I get those in and uh, set. So uh, as I'm opening it, let me show. So uh, I've got the box open. So the processor, at least the way the AMD boxes come now, uh, processor is here. So this I'll set aside and their fan comes here. So let me move this box out of the way. So they also have a manual. You should read this if you haven't read one. Pretty interesting stuff. And voila. So what you see here, this great thing, uh, I've never had a problem with processors overheating. I don't overclock anything. So I may not be the best anecdotal example of having stock fans work properly, but if you don't plan on doing any ridiculous overclocking or anything like that, typically the stock fans, I've never had an issue with any of the processors I've had overheating, shutting down. It, it just, I, I don't try to push my machines to the extreme in that case. But if you do, or if that's what you intend to do, I would hang on to this and buy a aftermarket cooler. Don't even attempt to use this. That sounds like bad advice, but keep the stock cooler in case you need it but and the thermal grease that's what this little gray area is don't touch it don't put anything on it so what I'm gonna do is while I'm talking since I'm not gonna I don't have the processor in the pin set I'm gonna leave that there just kind of sit it back in there because I don't want to smear that grease that thermal grease so I'll leave that here now as I mentioned this is the most crucial part so this is gonna be let me see if I can zoom in. This is going to be difficult. But what I'll do is I'll actually try to take a photo of this. This corner here actually shows the pin. There's a little black angle. Let me... So this might be not the best. Because I don't think my camera will zoom in. So that's the limit. So this corner here, I don't know if that's visible. I'll try to highlight it, circle it. There's a little corner that's kind of dug in. That's the zero or the one pin. Now if I look at the processor, I'm going to carefully open this, there is a similar triangle right here where my left thumb is. That's going to go, that's going to align there. So if I set them up like I would drop it in, it's going to be in this manner. So I'm going to have to arrange this because my thumb won't twist like that. So I'm going to carefully, first I'm going to open this up. So now this is opened. Don't forget, this is zero insertion. Pick it up like this, and oh, this is terrible because now I don't want to touch any of the pins underneath. And I'm actually a very bad angle here, but, and then I'm going to slowly and gently set it in. So I don't know if you heard that, but I just let it slowly fall in. Don't push it. Don't do anything. Don't try to thumb it in. It will have some movement, and then you slowly, done. So now the processor is set inside, and now I'm going to put my CPU cooler on there. Uh, these are a little different with the, they're different from the, excuse me, from the Intel uh, CPUs. The Intel ones, you have to, they come with like this bracket, and they actually have to force it in these you kind of lock in. Given the configuration of this board, I'm going to put this tab up here because I don't want it to potentially interfere with any cards that are going to go here. So, and this wire, I can neatly add it here. See, this is where the CPU fan will eventually go and I'll have, I can clean this up neatly and I'll show pictures of that later when it's complete. But for now, I'm going to wrangle this cable out of the way lift it get the camera a bit gonna flip this corner in 
slide this over and then just gently set it down. So I'm not forcing this down, I'm still not trying to force it down. So if you see here, get myself a little bit of room and I'm going to make sure this tab's down because this is the dynamic tab. This is a tab that moves up and down this little lever. This tab's down. I'm going to slowly and with a little bit of effort, push this side down and then it will click. But I want this tab up because when I lock it, it's going to be like that. And come on. Okay. So now that tab's down. So now I'm going to hold this because I don't want it grinding. I'm going to lift this and it pops down. The whole time I'm not pushing down. You don't want to force it down. This will, this little lever here will do that for you. So what now that that's installed. So that pretty much covers the install. Never, don't forget to plug this in because you actually will burn out a CPU if you forget to plug that in. Uh, that's now it's set up. So what I'll do is I'll just get like a little plastic zip tie or something to keep this cable here. So it's a little clean, so it doesn't get in the way flop around because this will be standing in a vertical case. So that essentially covers the AS rock. Uh, I'll post some of the specs for the board. It's not really interesting to, at least for me, but well, maybe for the sake of completeness, power pin, USB three, SATA connectors at a right angle, SATA connectors coming up out of the board, uh, PCI, PCI one, PCI three. Yeah, there it is. And this one, uh, let me be a little extra careful now that I have the processor installed. We have the standard analog audio, digital audio or optical audio. I think it's digital, but uh, I'm not a, I like my audio, but I'm not a huge audio file. Uh, gigabit Ethernet, USB 3, HDMI, VGA, DVI. Uh, this is the USB 3 Plus, or I don't remember what that one's called, but this is the USB 3 C connector. Uh, I'll, like I said, I'll put the specs and very and the different connections for this board, your old PS2 and your USB 2 there. So that pretty much covers the important aspects of this board. I will show it installed in the case and I will go over it a little bit more in terms of how I install it and how I clean things up. But for all intents and purposes, that's the, that's pretty much this video. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.